welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Before we get to today's project, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. You guys, I hit 10,000 subscribers just this, a few days ago, and I honestly could hardly believe it. I'm so grateful. Uh, you all help keep me motivated to keep getting projects done. Uh, your comments put a smile on my face, and you just being here and subscribing to my channel helps keep this little business of mine going, and I so appreciate it. Thank you all so very, very much. Anyway, for today's project, I have a little end table for you. I got it not too terribly long ago at the Goodwill. I think I paid $10 for it. Uh, and I gave it a nice little makeover. I hope you guys like it. And without further ado, let's get to today's project. So here are the before pictures of the cute little end table that I am making over for today's video. It had some damage to the top of it. I think I paid $9.99 at Goodwill for it. It was solid wood and I decided to go ahead and sand down the top of it uh, all the way to the original wood. Now at this point I had a plan for this but I ended up kind of switching directions a little bit and I'll explain that a little bit more later. It took me about 20 minutes to get this all sanded down and once I was finished I did take a large paintbrush and I dusted off most of the sanding dust and then I grabbed my crud cutter and began giving it a bath. So I just squirted the crud cutter on, washed it back with uh, one of my shop towels and once I was done with that, uh, oh yeah, I did clean the inside of it as well. It was pretty dusty and once I was done with this step I took the hardware off the little drawer that went in it and then uh, washed that up too and then washed the entire piece down with some clean water just to get rid of any of the crud cutter residue and the sanding dust that might be left still on the top. I didn't want to use crud cutter on those open grains of wood. Now somehow, even though I had my camera set up, I must not have hit the record button when I put the stain on the top. But here is what it looked like after I had put the first coat of stain on it. And I say the first coat because I ran into some issues that I will again explain in a little bit. For this piece, I am using one of the beautiful Cottage Colors by DIY Paint. This one is called Americana. The great thing about this paint is that it has a built-in sealer. To me, it's a little like cheating, honestly, because you don't have to use any kind of a sealer once you're done. I'm so used to having to wax my pieces or seal them with Big Top. It just feels a little odd uh, to not have to do any of that <laughs> with this paint. This is a great paint. It is self-leveling. It is harder than heck once it's dry, and it comes in a beautiful array of colors. And we are going to be adding six new colors to our line on March 28th. So definitely join me for that. They will be available on my website as of the 28th. So I am giving this three coats of this paint. I probably could have gotten away with two, uh, but I knew I was going to be using my rotary sander on it to uh, sand it smooth and just add a little bit of distressing. So I went ahead and gave it a third coat just for extra protection. Once I was done with the paint and it was completely dry, I brought it back inside and went ahead and sealed my top. Now here's the story on the top, you guys. I originally stained it. I had some uh, stuff that seeped back up through the top. It gummed up on me. I ended up having to sand the whole thing back down again. It was horrible. And while I was doing that, I decided to change directions just a little bit and go ahead and sand the edges. Originally, I had decided to do something different. So I, I changed course and I went ahead and sanded around the edges and stained the entire top. It turned out beautifully the second time. I used some mineral spirits as a conditioner and to wipe the uh, wood clean when I was done. Then I applied my stain and this is me adding Sweet Pickens top coat in matte 
to the top of this. I did end up using the top coat uh, three times to give it a really, really good seal. And Sweet Pickens Top Coat, if you've never used it, is another awesome product. Dries perfectly clear and hard as a rock. It's a lovely way to finish wood. Then it was on to doing the little bit of sanding that needed to be done. Honestly, this paint dries so smooth that it really didn't require much. I mainly was just doing a little bit of light distressing around some of the edges. I also went ahead and sprayed the uh, hardware with some antique gold spray paint by Rust-Oleum before I moved on to decorating my piece. For this, I'm using this beautiful transfer called Golden Damask. It's by Redesign with Prima, and it was curated by Katja. And the fun part of this was trying to figure out exactly how to get uh, the, the transfers so that the center of the table had the center of the design. So I measured uh, my little cutout there is 20 and one half inches. Each side of the transfer is 12 inches. So I had to go from the center out and then figure out exactly what size I needed. It was a lot of math, uh, but I got it figured out and luckily everything worked out perfectly. So I just had my uh, pieces of transfer cut out and ready to go down before I got started. So this paint takes the transfer very, very well. Uh, it wasn't too hard to um, put down. And you guys, this is after this paint has only had maybe a half an hour to dry completely. So I just laid my transfer down where I needed it. Uh, I rubbed it in with that transfer stick and I burnished it in very well with that piece of vellum. And then I moved on to the other side, just being super careful to line it up perfectly so that again, the center of the design is right smack dab in the center of the little cutout of the table. And then same thing. I just use that transfer stick to stick this transfer down. There were a lot of little tidbits of the transfer. So just trying to be careful and slow and uh, make sure that all of the transfer is adhered to my piece. So I did the same procedure on the other side. I also uh, used the transfer on the very back of the table. And once I was done with this part, I also did the uh, front of the drawer. And I think it turned out really cute. I'm glad I used this transfer. It's lovely on this table. Now the design wasn't quite as wide as the front of the drawer so I grabbed a couple of the strips that I had cut off and was able to find some of the matching parts of the design so that I could give it a more finished look. So that's what I'm doing there. Now, as I stated earlier, you definitely do not have to wax over this paint. However, I wanted to see if I could give this just a little bit more of a patina. So I grabbed my DIY dark wax and my waxing brush and I started giving this a coat of dark wax. I watched Jamie Ray uh, of Jamie Ray Vintage use something, do something similar uh, to a piece that she had done and I liked the effect. So I went over it with one coat of the dark wax. It's great because since it's got a build in sealer you don't have to clear wax it or do anything else first you can just go directly on it uh, with that dark wax it wipes off really really easily so if you really want areas to look more aged and patinaed like I did I just added a little more dark wax to the corners and instead of wiping it off completely I just kind of used my shop towel and dabbed off the wax 
that left a little bit more on the piece to give it that kind of aged antique look. In the areas where I wiped back the wax a little bit more aggressively with my shop towel, the effect was definitely more subtle, but it was still there and it gave the uh, cottage color just enough depth and dimension to make it look more aged and antiqued. And I really, really love the effect. Once I finished waxing the body of this little end table, I moved on to finishing up the drawer and again, just giving it a nice coat of the dark wax and then carefully wiping back the excess with my shop towel. Just again, giving it a little dab dab here and a dab dab there so that it left a little bit more of the wax on the front of the drawer. Lastly, it's time to reinstall the hardware with its beautiful new color that almost exactly matches the transfer. And then this piece is done. I really love how it came out. I hope you guys do too. goes for today you guys I hope you liked it and I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please remember to give it a thumbs up I so appreciate that and if you haven't already I would love it if you would think about subscribing to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything also don't forget to comment below let me know what did you guys think of that beautiful Americana color I absolutely love it and I can hardly wait to use it again uh, just a couple of announcements First of all, today, by the time you guys see this video, I will have uploaded the new Roy Cycle decoupage papers onto my website, as well as restock some of the older ones. So go check those out, they're awesome. Uh, and also, the new cottage colors are coming out on the 28th, so I'm thinking about doing a live for that, so stay tuned for that. Uh, as far as the uh, DIY paints go, I am getting the rest of my order in today, so uh, they will be available on my website at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. Uh, so anything that I was out of, if you looked earlier, will be restocked today. Uh, and then for, let's see, Tuesday, for Tuesday's video, I am definitely planning on another thrift flip for you guys. I have already started on a couple projects. Unfortunately, one of them is going to have to get set to the side for a little while because it was a sign and my Cricut uh, is decided to uh, take a little vacation. It's on the fritz right now, so hopefully my husband can get it fixed for me. Anyway, I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. I hope you will join me back here on Tuesday for that video. Until then, thank you guys so much for being here. I so appreciate you. I will see you Tuesday. <laughs> Bye.